We're hot. How, hello, gentlemen. How are you? Alex, hey. Jason, you got your mics this time? Mics now. What are we talking about? What's going on? What are we doing? Uh, we're doing a podcast. Okay. This we're doing a podcast. Welcome to Powerful Truth Angels. This is Powerful Truth Angels. Uh, I got to tell you, today's been a fucking roller coaster. Had, a, had an illustrious guest set up. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to say who it was, but he's an A-list celebrity, a titan in the industry. And I understand that these podcasts are a pain in the ass. Nobody wants to do a fucking podcast, right? right. Nobody, Absolutely nobody not. wants to be a guest. It's just like the last thing in your list of all your fucking media bullshit that you do. The podcast is like taking out the trash. Like people don't even want to shoot. Celebrities don't even want to shoot commercials. Like athletes, they don't even want to do it. They're just like, ah, whatever. The podcast, are you fucking kidding me? So I had this guy lined up. I got lucky. I'm not going to say who it was because he might still come. He might not. But his name, he's an A-list celebrity, a titan, a monolith. Okay, a brick shit house in the biz. His name might or might not rhyme with Rad Spit. Any ideas who I'm talking about here? He's in a movie called uh. Night Dub. No? Look, I've had no sleep. Had no sleep. I was with I was I was with the born and raised team shooting. And then I was wired, and then my girlfriend said, my girlfriend's playing poker. She said, can I come over uh, after I play and get in bed with you? I said, sure, you can do that. And then she gets in bed with me, and then I'm up. And I go to bed at four, I get up at, at seven, yeah. and I go to the gym, I'm throwing shit around, you know, getting it in, as I do, and I'm fucking, I'm loopy, I'm loop to loop I'm all over the place. Anyways, a lot going on this week, all right? This is my first uh, my first apple of the day. I see you've uh, addressed the camera. It's great. Wonderful angles here, you guys. You're really, you're really setting up the mise, the mise en scene. Is that what it is? Mise en scene. Day for night. You want to do some day for night? Huh? Yep. We'll get make it blue in here. MOS day for night. Let's just go like this. Day for night. MOS. You know what MOS is? You know the story of MOS? Any film school people out there? It's one of the few things I retain from film school. It's when the Germans, okay? The Germans would say, mit out sound, when they said no sound in something. Mit out sound is MOS. Day for night is when you shoot day for night. So when I say day for night, MOS, I want you to turn everything black, flip it, and then no sound. And I'll tell you this, uh, I was alerted by, by O'Neill that in the in last week's episode, when in the episode when I say I want you to edit here and cut it, you just showed it all. He's Jason just said fuck it. I go Jason, no, cut this part out. It's in the show. You do you want to speak up for yourself? Which part? I don't know which part. Whichever part where I said stop here, edit this shit out. You let it run. You just said fuck it. We're gonna we're gonna let it go live. He thinks more is better, but I think sometimes less is better. I think sometimes it's better to to cut out cut some of the fat. I mean, I think having. Well, more time than 24 hours to turn over an episode is also a key. I thought you were going to say that, ma'am. I thought you were going to say that. It's but an excuse. I'll, I'll admit it's an excuse. Sleep is for sluts. You know what I mean? Are you I a didn't slut? sleep. No, I was not a slut. I was a... Uh, you were a little sleep I was slut. very prudish. So look, my guest, uh, my guest isn't coming, so we're going we're gonna to run... I have another... See, this is, this, is, this is why I know God's looking out for me. God is good, okay? You believe in God? Yeah. You didn't sound convinced. You know what I. You know what I mean. What do you? What do you believe in, Alex? You believe in God? Like, he's an atheist. He's a staunch atheist. Do you believe in God? I believe in like the Force. You know. The Force. You believe in the. Not literally Star Wars, but you no, know. that's what you believe. You believe in fucking Yoda. <laughs> the, the all the the vibrations and stuff. When I say God, I mean whatever power is out there bigger than myself. Uh -huh. That's what I believe in. So trees, maybe the government. Fuck the government. Um. God's looking out for me. One door opens, another one door closes, and the trap door opens, and someone pops out. I got another guest, maybe at the same level, maybe even bigger than the guest before. Might even be a guest that, uh, uh, if you look at the numbers, if you look at the PTA numbers, when when people people okay, I'm gonna say this: the guy I got coming on, if he if that's if he identifies as a guy, and I think he does, the person 
they that's coming is someone that's that I get hit up about all the time. Can you bring this person on? And I go, listen, I can't I can't make the wind blow. I can't make the leaves rustle, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So he comes on when he feels like coming on. And today he just calls me. He's like, what's up? I'm in the neighborhood. I'm like, I lost a guest. I gained a guest. But this is gonna be a good one. Um I think I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be a good show. I think this guy has a lot to say. We have a history, me and this person. Me and this, me and this, uh, this other titan of the industry, another celebrity, and his name, his name rhymes with Fenicio Gelscoro. This person coming on. I'm just kidding. Um, anyways, listen, I got a guest coming on, and we're gonna talk and we're gonna chop it up. It's been a long time coming. You guys know him. You guys love him. He's mysterious. He's amorphous. Sometimes he's a liquid. Sometimes he's a vapor. Um, where's he at? Is he coming? There he is. <laughs> <laughs> the Kramer of the West Side Always disappeared. Right <laughs> Here he is. Ladies and gentlemen, the illustrious Spanto. Spantana. How was that entrance? Pretty good. Was Pretty it, uh, smooth. Was it Seinfeld ish? Yeah. Well, you didn't slide in. You, ah, you got to slide in, fucking slide across the floor. <laughs> I don't have that much energy now. You remember that thing we did way, way, way back where, where I was like, I don't know what I didn't know what it was for. But we did some interview early, and I and I and I put you down as professional enthusiast. Yeah, I remember, remember that. that? The, the asshole that didn't want to fucking pay me after the shoot. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah I yeah. didn't know what it was for. I was wearing the shirt, the buys the police shirt from season one. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Long I had a hard ago. part in my hair, like a lane. <laughs> um, it happens. This is this is Sponto. This is my partner, in born and raised. <laughs> We've been together for a very long time. What up, y'all? <laughs> He's here. Yeah. Everyone's been asking me. They go, "Hey, can you guys?" That, periodically, am I wrong? Do they just do they hit us up? Yeah, it's our most requested. One of the most guests. requested guests. I don't be talking besides me. He don't be talking. I don't talk a lot. I'm no. a man of few words. He's a man of few words. He's a hard get. He's going to stay. He's, he's protected behind the shades. If he takes those off, it's fucking game over. <laughs> I mean, you know what? Don't let the green eyes pop out. Yeah, you know what's up. Mm. What's up? How do we do? How do we do yesterday? What do you think? Do we get it? Uh, we got it, but I think it, it lacks uh, intensity. You think so? I, well, I think I think I think one of the reasons that we always get shit that jumps out of the screen is because like I'm always really frantic and I'm always like last minute, so I'm like we got to get this shit done, and like it, it, it translates to the screen, right? Mm. So yesterday, like, every time I do something that's very like uh, rehearsed and planned out, it's okay, but it's not like what I normally get. You thought it was too chill. Very chill. I'm not a chill dude. The brand is not a chill brand. So, <laughs> yeah. you see what I'm saying? I understand that. You want, yeah. you do things in a certain way, everyone's on edge. Like the last shit that I shot um, with the, the embroidery around the hat, like that one was perfect. It was like, you know, crash was everywhere. There was like dudes coming out of different houses and stuff. I was mad, it was mad sketch. I was like, I don't know if we should be here. You know, all the Korean dudes were honking at us and stuff. So. But um, you're, you're truly a fiend for action to quote. Um, I didn't even really realize that and so we you, did the modelo shoot with the stevon yeah and like we, sh we, we shut down the, the 10 east yeah right like with all those cars yeah and then two tones like i'm gonna pull up and shoot so like after we're you know we're there they're doing donuts doing their thing and then like i was i guess i was bouncing around like a little kid yeah. you know and yeah. and it's then when i got back in the car stevon was laughing he goes hey homie you look like a fucking 14 year old out there bouncing around the fucking freeway yeah and i was just i was like you know what maybe he's right i'm just like an adrenaline junkie straight up Fiend, action fiend. I like, didn't realize that until, 100%. until last year. Yeah, because every time, everything, the mo you're the most happy when dust is being kicked up <laughs> on a level. And, and also if there's an element of danger where that's, I'm like, I'm getting to a point where I'm like, we can't, we can't do that. You're like, no, we can do it. That, like, that sucks because I'm always trying to like push the book and like, you know, I'm yeah. like a habitual line stepper over and over and over again. Yeah. But it gets me to trouble. Yeah. My whole life is trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. You, 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 uh, you definitely walk a, a line. You're, and it's you're, a balance. And you're like, <laughs> and you somehow navigate it. You you know you dodge raindrops. I can't, you know yeah. You've been you've had you've you've been blessed. I'll say that much. So fuck it. Let's tell let's tell the story. Let's tell the fucking born and raised story. You I want, mean I, I was like I was I was saving this. Remember we had the thing at a in what in, in Silkworm's backyard. Yeah. After the Dead City show, and we're yeah, like yeah. this is gonna be the one we're gonna spill it all out. But then the the Uber driver stole our car plaque, and then some oh, yeah. stuff happened. I had to find him and <laughs> all that stuff. Typical, yeah. Yeah. Then I then I got the chemo side effects, and I got all loopy. So it didn't happen that day. So yeah. since then I've been like, yo, let's let's figure out a time and a place. Yeah. And like I want to like you know it's a thing. Like it's an, it's an event, and I want to prepare for it. Yeah. But I figure. 
it'll be just like our shoots. If I prepare for it, it's not gonna come out right. So we might as well just do it now yeah. and talk the shit that we yeah. be talking. So I'm That's down. Like I said, I'm just throwing this out there. Yeah. It's, it's like it's, I'm, I've only slept four hours. I'm Same. exhausted. Like I just, I just came from the, I just came from the doctor. I got all these weird chemo problems and stuff. I'm yeah. shot out. So um, if I stutter or I'm not as funny or as energetic or like myself, it's just because I'm, you're, you're in I'm, your head. I'm out of whack you, right now. You I'm say not that, my, no, but I'm you're not always good. Not, no, no, you're not, good. Nah, you nah, sound nah. better than you think you do. Trust me. Yeah, whatever. I'm, you see. Um, so yeah, we'll get into we'll get into the whole fucking story. We'll tell we'll talk about. Uh, it's just, it's just not, it's it's like the more, the further we go, We're gonna the kill faster. our whole Wednesday. We're not gonna get any work done because once we start talking, it'll be like 8.30. I know. Yeah, and then we'll go to Kitchen 24 or something. Like it's, you know. I mean, I'm supposed to meet with, uh, I'm supposed to meet with Perico later to talk to him, to like consult with him over some shit. One of my favorite Crips. You might, might have to just tell him to come here, huh? That fool's yeah. tight. Tell that fool to come over here. Just tell him to come here, we'll yeah. just do it, you know? Yeah. Might have to do that. Smooth um, as hell, that guy. Yeah, he's cool as fuck, huh? Yeah. Yeah, he's cool. Um, So, it's crazy because like as we progress, like we thought it was hectic. Year year one's fun, two, but we thought it was hectic. I thought year three was hectic. Now shit's going so fast. I open the emails, I'm like, I can't I tell Justin, I'm like, I can't even read half of these. You gotta tell me. Crystallize the email to like a sentence and tell me what you need because it's too much shit, right? And but somehow it gets done. Someone told me if you want to get something done. Seventy two thousand three hundred and six unopened emails. On oh yeah, my let, phone. Me let me see. Seventy two thousand emails. Seventy seven oh two. Seventy seven thousand. But a lot of that is spam. I'm not gonna lie. A lot of that's some bullshit because I'd be ordering shit online. Or like those production emails. Like when you make clothes, I don't think people know like how difficult it is to make an article of clothing. <laughs> Fucking sucks. How many hands it has to touch? Like from the roll of fabric to the dye to the thread to the so the it's, there's so many different things that has to happen. So. When I see those like those production emails where they're all like energetic and enthusiastic with yeah. exclamation marks, like yeah, dude, yeah. there's like forty just for one T-shirt, so yeah. I don't open those emails anymore because they give no. me anxiety. No, you know? it's crazy. Uh -uh. You can't. No, nah. you can't. No, and and it's a special type of person that can manage those emails. I can't do it. I was not put on earth to be a person reading those fucking emails. You know, like I, no, I can't do it. That's not your special. I could I could never <laughs> tech pack anything. No, no. I, I blow my brains out. I listen. I tech packed for a long time, maybe a decade. I did tech packs, <laughs> and I won't. I'm traumatized. I won't even know. I won't even open them anymore. Yeah. I had to do one the other day for for that thing we're doing. Yeah, because I had to. Yeah, and it, and when I started doing it, it I started. Good. I started being like, "Fuck!" Like it, they fuck me up because yeah. they're. It's the most nitpicky. Imagine like you have to make a blueprint for something, and you fuck up one thing, you got to go back and fix it. And go. You have to do it like ten times every tech pack. It yeah. is fucked. It's a nightmare. Shout out to our people. Thank you so much. You're keeping us going. I mean, our team. Um, our squad is heavy. Squad is heavy. They're, they're out here. I mean, everyone, the thing about Born and Raised, and the thing about our company is that if you work for Born and Raised, you're fucking working. There's no, like, <laughs> other companies are, like, they're hanging out, smoking weed and playing mixtapes, fucking getting up, like, DJing and shit and, like, having a sandwich. If you're at Born and Raised, we're still small and scrappy, you're fucking working. <laughs> one design, and they're just cranking one design. Yeah. Doing nothing. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're like, here. six dudes making yeah. one design. They're like, woo, yeah. <laughs> Put on a flannel. Inspiration on a trip. Shorts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drives me crazy. We just have art busting out of our ears, it seems, constantly. You yeah, know? we're we're spinning. It's, it's going very fast, but fuck it. You got to do it. So, anyways, um, we're going to tell the story. It's It starts... Fuck! It starts in a in a in a in a universe that now doesn't exist in the way it did called Venice. That's where it started. I was there this morning. He was there this morning, and uh, I'm here. I'm not there anymore, but that's where I'm from. And this guy, uh, I mean, you could tell him where you came up with the idea. You want to tell him the the story about uh, Kane, where you saw it. You want to go that deep? I don't know, cause I'm. You know, I'm saving that for you saving it until I find him, and I almost I know where he is. He's in Idaho. Really? Yeah, he's in Idaho. So I I got a hold of his cousin when I was shooting this other thing, and he was just like, "Oh yeah, oh my, uh, Kane Kane." I was like, "Yeah, Kane Kane, you know, the one that used to like." He's like, "Yeah, yeah, for sure." He, yeah, he moved to Idaho. He got sober, so he's out there. He got sober. Yeah, but I just I want to wait until I see him to yeah. shoot that thing, and then we'll. Oh, you want to do a little vignette with show it? Are you kidding me? Oh yeah, it it looks it's yeah, so, this is the genesis right here. It's so perfectly crude and fucked up, like someone did it with a fork or something. But you it, could, you it could, looks uh, fantastic. Okay. It looks amazing. It. Yeah, I'm. Like, can we talk about Kane for a minute? Can we talk about him? Oh yeah, but the, yeah, <laughs> because I uh, this dude was a hustler, right? Yeah. He was a hustler. I used to, I used to. You were much much more adjacent to him than I was. I, I would, <laughs> you know, he'd be fucking around the different groups, right? 
We'd be fucking with you people coming around with my people, which is like some skaters and graffiti writers and fucking, and then he'd be with the surfers. But that's what we did over there. Yeah. And I remember that's he- That's the beauty of it all. He, he, was, he was the first dude I seen go camouflage. Cause I seen him one day rollerblading down the boardwalk with an SMC backpack. Yeah. And I go, that's fucking Kane. Rollerblading? Rollerblading. <laughs> I swear to fucking God. Because he was undercover. He was yeah. so deep undercover. He was just navigating all worlds. And he'd be pulling up. I'd be at the- some place near left side hanging out with a bunch of kids and he would pull up and serve them and like he was just everywhere yeah and he was like a, a crazy hustler he'd be like yeah i'm opening up a beauty salon i'm doing it. i'm like what the fuck is going on this dude's like like the energy the the, the brain activity on that guy was fucking next level you have you have you been in, you've been in trouble before right minor have minor you ever been trouble. to the county jail no i never went to county you never oh. went to court or anything you ever been to west la court yeah i've been to west la court again you remember when west la court was a criminal courthouse and not like a courthouse where you go to pay your tickets yeah anyways we, we were there and we all got busted there was a whole bunch of us west siders in the cell right and yeah. then there's a girl i don't know what her official title was but she would come and get all your info and talk to you and get you ready to go see the judge she had like a, a split tongue that went this way like oh, some <laughs> white chick and then i you know i saw kane saw her and then like you know i ran around the county for a while a couple months whatever bumped into him somewhere else and then we ended up in a day room because this is when Lee Baca was the sheriff. You know, oh, he got yeah. busted for all that corruption, si yeah. corruption stuff. Yeah. So back then you would go to a four man cell and there'd be seven people in the cell. You'd have to sleep in shifts, right? right. They wouldn't feed you. It was weird. You never came out of your, it was, it was like totally fucked up, like inhumane, right? Yeah. Um, but anyways, we're all in a day room and I got to this day room late, like at like four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Everybody was asleep except for this one dude who was on the, he was on the, uh, on the payphone in yeah. his boxers and he was like, making motions like he was having sex going oof, oof, oof. and i was like who the fuck is this dude man this is weird so he, he turns around he goes oh what's up sponto and i was just like oh it's king oh hell and, no. and then uh yeah he, he had like a semi hard on and shit and i was like this is weird man so <laughs> after he hangs the phone up we start talking or whatever and he was just like you know who that was he's like that's that girl from the courthouse he cracked the girl that worked at the courthouse while he was there just like spit so much game to her i was like that's not her man you're tripping there's no way and he goes watch this so he goes to his bunk he pulls out his stuff and he starts pulling out pictures of the girl from the courthouse i was just blown away by that at that point in time you know like That's what do you crazy. what do you say to that girl you know what i'm saying like how do you end up having phone sex with her like it's <laughs> the hustle is is mind-boggling right mm -hmm. yeah. imagine I, I remember somewhere um i was at a store in la and, and one of the dudes that worked there I was, I was sitting there just hanging out and one of the dudes that worked there walked up to this girl it's like tall model looking girl and um you know you know all these people i'm talking about and he walked up to her and he like grabbed her elbow and he whispered something in her ear. And, and I was watching this from afar, just like spectating. And the girl just like went, her, ch her cheeks turned bright red. She turned around and you could tell like she just, she was like, it, it was like he said something to her that titillated her so much that she was ready to fuck. Right. It was, and I'm, we're like, what did you say? And he's like, I don't, know. I don't want to talk about. It. He's like, I'm not telling you. I'm like, what? What did you? What could you possibly say to a person to make that happen? That's fucking game. I always wonder what those one liners would be. Right? Yeah. I have a dolphin at home. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know what it takes. Yeah. What, what, was the, what, was, what was the story about him when you used to live on Pacific about uh, where he got soap in his eyes? Oh, <laughs> He's, okay <laughs> my house was just at one point under bagels it was like it was just um it was like it was just like a there was a summer or two where bagels door was open my door was open and it was just like people just rotating going from house to house partying every kind every type of person gangsters graffiti writers um south side like santa monica south side guys um Everything, mm -hmm. my 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 guys and my crew, just this fucking bizarre melting pot. Yeah. And then we'd be like, we'd be like shooting dice with 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 the show lines or whatever. And it was just like that's just how I was living. I was fucking fucked up, partying all the time. It made sense to me. Ah, it's just a nonstop party up and down those. What? Two. what happened? What do you mean? When did that stop? Oh, I'll tell you when. I it saw, it I stopped saw, when the it stopped when the war happened. That's I saw when it I saw little man at at, uh, at Gilbert's this morning. Yeah, he pulled up. It was it was like eight thirty in the morning. We had finished the shoot because we started at six a.m. Uh -huh. And he, he goes to order breakfast and he goes, "Let me get a Tito's and tonic." And I was just like, "Who is eight o'clock in the morning?" And he was just like, "Yeah, fuck dog." You know, he just has his, you know has his. But we, we got still to talking go, about the still, yeah, going. still going. We talked wow. about the same thing. And then, because I remember like our stimulation level, like the bar was set so high because it was like, it, you know, it was, it was like really, really fast and dangerous. And it was always, you know, it was like always really, really, really exciting. And then one day it just dropped off and the party ended. Well, because people, and I'm like, what happened? When you're partying that hard, people die, people go to jail, people get arrested. 
people get fucked up or they get so. But they, they get replaced by new people. I'm just like, at what point did all this stuff stop? You know, because it used to be like full throttle in Venice all the time. I mean, I, I know I don't it, stopped see that for, no more. it stopped for me when the war happened and it got too crazy because they're just like all that, all that shit was going on. But so he was like, that was my house. It was a party house. It was wild. Kane was there one day and it just got to a point where like, <laughs> it was just like, my, it was like my house was overrun, right? It was just like people everywhere. Yeah. And I would just be like, I'd be like, I'm, I'm leaving everyone out, right? That's how I just like get everyone out of the house. I just leave and go eat. I can't, I can't leave in my house when I'm gone because fucking what I come back to. So that happened one day. Kane was there <laughs> taking a nap on the couch and, uh, and we're like, hey, we got to go, Kane. We got we to gotta bounce. He's, he's like, all right, hold up, cuz. And we're like, all right. And he, and he gets up and he, <laughs> It's got these white jeans on and he goes in the bathroom and he washes his face and he comes out and he's like, all right, cause about the bounce. And he looks at us and he looks and he's just got soap, just white soap all on his eyes on his face. And we're looking at him, we're like, what the fuck? And he's just, and he's like, all right, then we just didn't say shit. We're like, we didn't know how to tell him, like your eyes are full of soap. I'm like his powerful crip eyes. Didn't just, he have like piss all over his jeans or something? <laughs> I didn't want to say, <laughs> he had a few pee drops on his white jeans. <laughs> You gotta remember the details. I don't want him, I don't want him coming back after me. You know? I, nah, I um, want to find him. Tell him to come back. Uh, Please, Caesars. Kane, if you're out there, we're looking for you. Kane. Holla at us. Sponto's looking for you. I ain't looking for you. <laughs> so, did you forget that one thing at the store? Now you can get snacks, drinks, and other grocery essentials that you need delivered in under an hour with DoorDash. And as always, DoorDash connects you with the restaurants you love right now, right to your door. Ordering is easy. Open the DoorDash app, choose what you want to eat, and your food will be left safely outside your door with a contactless delivery drop-off setting. I'm going to tell you something, okay? I use this product. I use DoorDash because I'm a person who's very busy. Maddie would make fun of me. He says, you're not busy. I am very busy. Sometimes I don't have time to fucking make food. I don't have time to, 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 to prepare the food. I don't have time to go to the store. So I'm home. I'm working and I just open up my phone and I'm like, you know what I want? I want a whole chicken because I can eat the chicken with impunity. It goes into my noom category in the yellow. I eat the fucking chicken. I don't feel bad about myself. And you know what? I didn't have to go get the goddamn chicken. I just open up DoorDash. I find my local chicken spot. My local chicken spot down the street is Kismet Rotisserie. Shout out to those people. They make a goddamn bomb ass chicken and I can't get enough of it. The chicken soup by the court. I order that on DoorDash. I get the chicken soup by a court. I get a whole chicken and I also get the, the cucumber. I was eating some of the cucumber. I get the little cucumber sides. I get the little cabbage wedge salad, the homemade hummus. Sometimes I get the tahini. If I'm feeling, if I'm feeling real spicy, I get that red peanut that red peanut paste. You guys don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Do you know what I'm talking about? Same. Have you had Kismet Rotisserie? Yeah, 100%. You have? Yeah, 100%. I'm going to get you. You know what? I'm going to get you guys Kismet Rotisserie on the next show. That chicken is unmatched. Yes. Right? It's second to none. Sponto, another chicken man here. He knows. Yeah. I mean, there's lots Kism- of chickens in the city, but ain't nobody fucking with Kismet them. Rotisserie. Shout out to Kismet Rotisserie. Wow, who, who I fuck. Shout out to Eric at Kismet Rotisserie, who laces my shit. Shout out to the fool, the, the fool that works in the back, the line cook. He That's Eric. He had a bunch of food and showed me his born and raised shirt through the window. That's right. That's yeah. Eric, I think. That's, That's the homie. Yeah, he hooks it up, and uh, it's nothing but love. Uh, from the PTA crew to the to the Kismet Rotisserie posse, and uh, we they love you guys. They catered our first episode. Anyways, I can't say enough. I love that chicken. Um, and I get it through DoorDash. And I, I, I open up my phone because I'm too lazy to go literally down the street sometimes because I'm fucking busy. I'm a busy person. It's like 50 feet away, though. It's 50 feet away. Sponto will run there and back three times. Me, I'll just sit here and be like, I, can't, I don't have time. I order the shit. So I, there's something nice. There's something nice about someone bringing me some chicken. Something nice about someone coming to my house, hitting the doorbell and going, here you go, sir. Here's your dinner. I just feel like I'm having a restaurant experience at home. That's very American. It's very American. Listen, for a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more. When you download the DoorDash app and enter code PTA2021, that's 25% off up to $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code PTA2021. Don't forget, that's code PTA2021 for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply, open up DoorDash, get Kismet Rotisserie, Order a whole chicken, take it to the face, and that's it. That's all you got to do to live a healthy life. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Wild time. I started moving on in my life, trying to get my shit together. Because when you're in the middle of that endless summer Venice shit, it's like... It never stopped. It's just like barbecue after barbecue after party. And every night there was a fucking fight. And every night someone fucked somebody and every night it was just crazy. Yeah. And everyone came to the beach at that. I mean, I'm sure still, but at that time, late nineties, early thousands, the whole world came to Venice. 
to the beach. Yeah. Every fucking weekend was like, like neck and neck, like throngs of people. Like yeah. it was like body to body on the boardwalk. Well, it's like, it's all of LA, right? And then LA just kind of empties right down Venice Boulevard and ends up in Venice Beach. Right. right? You know, I don't, I don't call it Venice Beach, but they end up at the boardwalk. Yeah. You know? Um, and you see too, you see the tourists would be there too, and they'd be like, they would be, like, they'd be dropped in the middle of it. Like, Sometimes people would be, it'd be so packed that they would park like on this side of Venice <coughs> Boulevard, you know, and like walk to the boardwalk, which is like a mile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. There's more people there in Disneyland. Yeah, at that time, and um, it was just like you didn't have to go anywhere. You just sit there and. You just, I would just sit there on a bench and just watch this carnival unfold. And then there'd be like riots. I remember the cops would drive their Suburbans in and be riding on the on the rails with these long ass batons. Yeah, you know yeah. those like those like those like beach riots in the summer, which were every, fun too. It was so much fun. <laughs> every every Sunday, you know. It's just oh my like, god, Sunday was the shit. Sunday was the jam. But we yeah. that's like that was a time like I was like 13, 14 years old, and that's when everybody still lived in Venice. So like we all had pit bulls and stuff. You know what I mean? We'd always have our clothes all creased up, and we'd all walk like 30, 40 of us to the beach and just post up in the. When they used to have those um those bleachers by the basketball court, they're gone now. But mm. um the, yeah. the and then, bleachers are gone? Yeah, Recently? but they, they took them down. They used to be real, real big. Remember oh, we used yeah, to yeah. all post up on the bleachers, like oh, 40, yeah, yeah. 50 people, and just hop on everybody. Hey, where you guys come from? You know? Um mm -hmm. but then I think about like that time in like Venice High School too, right? Could you take it back to Venice High School when we we're that age? It was just an open campus, or it still is an open campus. So oh, yeah. you could just walk across the street, get yeah. on the number two, go get a 40 from Smiley. You know, catch the bus, find Peck, get some acid, take acid. You know what I'm saying? It's just like it just yeah. never stopped. It just kept going and kept going and kept churning. You know? Yeah. It was a. It's a tough. It was a very unique way to grow up and a tough thing to let go of because it's the end. It's the endless summer because that summer would last from. I mean, it was it was like what eight months of summer? It seemed like like it was like it barely it would stop for a couple for a little bit when maybe it maybe like gray. December and January, but that's it. Yeah. You know. But I remember being out there in December and it being fucking eighty and yeah. it being like popping. Yeah. And Christmas, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So, anyways, that's a little backstory about where we grew up from, uh, where we grew up, and um, so yeah, you know, Spanto had his. I mean, you can tell him where you came up with the idea from. Um, I mean, I tell this story all the time, so I feel like uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's just when gentrification set in, you know, because like being from Venice back then was the most important thing, right? You couldn't, if you lived there, you couldn't just say I'm from Venice. You had to, you had to earn your keep, you know. So. When gentrification kind of set in like early 2000s, I want to say 2003, four is when it started to really kind of kick it up a notch, right? But you remember the brig? Yeah. Remember we used to go to the brig when CC from Shoreline used to work the door and they had those orange felt pool tables and Buck used to spin vinyl and stuff and it was just people from Venice that hung out there. It was like the coolest dive bar, it, well, from what I remember, because I was little, you know? But when that, that place was like the first place that flipped. And, and when it, I was a real little kid, my dad was like, don't go over there. Oh yeah, of course. He's like, because people just get stabbed all the time. That the Red Garter, the comeback in the Venice Saloon. Like my dad used to play, uh, you know, like juke joint shit back in you know, like the '60s and '70s, even Hananos. Oh yeah. But um, when they took that away from us, and that place kind of flipped over, and I saw all these like corn balls coming, you know, coming to Venice and like coming to the Brig, and like, yeah, hey, fuck Venice, Dogtown Z Boys, and was just like, man, just, you ain't from over here, man. You weren't born and raised here, so I just decided to cook up this brand. And I always had the idea when I was younger, but then. You know, when you're little, when you start fucking around and like you kind of go into the path that you're going, you know, it's like it's the coolest thing, right? You got all the girls, you kind of take what you want, you do your shit. But then as you get older, you start going to jail more and more and more and more and more and more. And the last time I went to jail I was like 26. Some girl left some e-pills in my center console and then I got pulled over and they're like, okay, you're going to get 10 years, blah, blah. So I ended up doing a year, right? And I remember I got sent to the hole in Supermax because somebody got stabbed in my dorm and fell on my bunk. So they came in like, whose bunk is this? Like, it's my bunk. So they cuffed me up and took me to the hole. And I remember there was this, uh, there was this like six foot five. He looked like a big old baby. He was shaped like a Simpson. It was his cop. He had like bad acne. He had a fucking retainer. He had a huge ass and he would come by every day. And like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was in the hole by myself. So he'd come by and he'd like crack jokes at me and shit, right? And so I cracked jokes at him back. And like, you know, you could tell like this dude had never been out the country. He probably never got any girls. He's just a big old nerd, you know? But he had the ability to pull me out of my cell, cuff me there, leave me cuffed on the floor for like 24 hours. And I'm like, this is not, this is not tight. You know, like when some big old fucking dork like this can tell me, you know, some big old baby Huey can tell me when I can eat, when I can shit, when I can use the phone. And I was like, when I get out, I gotta, I gotta figure something else out, man. Cause this, is, this isn't working. So. I just you saw the writing on the wall. You wanted something better. I was like, I can't do this no more, man. I'm over. Yeah, it. you know. So I was just like, when I, I had the microcosm version of that, <laughs> when I was in a holding tank, 
I mean, I wouldn't eat the, I couldn't eat the slimy fucking patties. They're put there. Those like burgers of slimy. You grow things. to love those things. Well, I, I was like, I'm not eating that <laughs> shit. I sat in the tank and one of the, one of the cops was like eating ice cream. And I was just sitting there like looking at him. I was starving. I was like, I wasn't starving, but I was hungry. I'm looking at him. He's like, stop looking at me. I'm like, all right. And then, and then I, I keep looking at him like this because I'm looking at his ice cream. He goes, you keep looking at me. I'm going to come in there. <laughs> and I the same thing. I'm like, this fucking idiot is telling me I can't watch him eat an ice cream. Like, I was like, this sucks. This is fucking garbage. I'm, like, I'm not with this jail shit. And people, you know, some people love it. Some people love the jail culture. Yeah. And then there was after there, there was another time when there was like this, there was like this homie that was there. He had a big, huge mustache. He looked like if you shaved the bull, that's what it would look like. You know, just big, huge chest tattoo on his chest. And I remember we were in a dorm um, and the cops came in and like yelled or something. And we're like, everybody be quiet. And he turned around to me with the littlest voice and he goes, homie, be quiet. And I was just like, this fool's like 6'5", probably weighs 280 pounds. And he's all scared. Of the, I was like, this ain't the dream I was sold, man. This isn't, this isn't tight. You know what I'm right. saying? I was like, nah, I can't live it like this the rest of my life. So right. I got out, started the clothing line and met your ass. Yeah, so I was here. Doing, we are. I was finishing up uh, another thing and making music videos. And Sponto was like, we had a mutual friend, and he's like, "Hey, Sponto's looking for you. Sponto from Venice is looking for you." I'm like, "Well, that doesn't sound good." And I'm like, "What does he want?" He's like, "He wants to talk to you." I was like, "All right." And I just was like, "Whatever." And I went on, and then, and I'm doing a trade show for this other line I had, and um, and you pulled up. And I had those old uh, fresh jive photos from Rick Klotz. Yeah, the yeah. fucking the and I, but I took I took them and like turned the made the crip surf and all that. Yeah, shit. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, and you pulled up. I had that shit on the outside of the booth. And you pulled up and tagged on the booth. And they're like, some guy tagged on your booth. I was like, oh, what's that? And then that was the same time too. I saw the born and raised sticker, and I was like, the sticker was a was was the native head. It said gentrification is genocide, and I remember it cut it cut through everything like a knife because it was the only thing that had any. First of all, I knew where it was from, and, and I felt the same way about not being able to buy a home in my own neighborhood. And also it was the only thing at that time saying anything. You're talking about like that time was 2012, maybe 2012, 11, probably maybe 11. And it was the only in that that in that state of the of uh, the street where whatever the fuck you want to call the world, nobody was saying nothing. It was just like bullshit, 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 logo, cartoon character. Money sign, boat, like just just normal crap. It was the time and before social media. So people, I mean, before it was, Instagram, it, it was there, but it wasn't like what it is now, where it's like the most important thing. Instagram wasn't now, even there yet. Now the Twitter. customer or the follower can like take a deep look into the brand owner's history and past. Like, is this guy full of shit or not? But back then, you come up with the logo, you could just like, you know, you didn't have to have substance. Yeah. You know, now you have to have substance. Now you have to have a story. Yeah. But no one had a story back then. And that shit cut through like it cut through everything like fucking hot knife through butter. And I was like, damn, that's fucking hard. I fuck with that. It was just cool and cool and like not cool, like cool, but cool to me. I was like, that's cool. Anyway, so yeah, I saw that. And then you caught up with me and we met. I was here and I'm shooting music videos and you caught at me. You're like, let's meet. We met over at this uh, uh, tea leaf. Uh, what's the fun coffee place? Coffee bean. Coffee bean. We met at the coffee bean. You were with Reese. <laughs> And we sat down, we just chopped it up for a long time. And I was like, oh shit. I was like, this dude's fucking got a lot of fucking game. He's got a lot of hustle. And you're just like telling me, he's telling me all this shit. And I was like, I remember I told you, I go, listen, I love everything you're doing. I'm like, what you need to do is you gotta make a film. And I remember you're like, huh? A film? I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, you gotta make a film. I'm like, that's what I do, I make films. Let's make a film. You have access to Venice. No one has access. You have access. I can put this together. How much would it cost? I was like, I don't know, three grand. You're like, three fucking thousand dollars? <laughs> Fool. And I remember you kept fighting me. You're like, three thousand dollars too much. I'm like, three thousand. I'm, I'm well, telling I worked, you. I worked you down to two. You did? Yeah, I got you down to two. But then after it was all said and done, you're like, nah, it's, that's going to be three. Pay up. <laughs> I was paying, paying for everything out of my own pocket. I know. And you got to think, like, when I got out, no. I just I designed something. I was like, hey, put this here, put this here, put this here. Yeah. And I printed 36 t shirts. I kept them in the trunk of my car. And I, like, sold half, gave half away. Sold half, gave half away. You always talk about, like, you hear about, like, Master P selling tapes and shit out the trunk of his car. It's exactly what we did. Turn nothing into something, you know? Well, that $3,000 film, we'll show it. I want you to edit it in. It's the first Born and Raised film. Smalto's father is in it. That shit was crazy. Crazy. It was like crazy. it was like chills. Like, I'm even talking about it now. I can remember that day on set. Your father and your mother hadn't seen each other in a while. They ain't seen each other in 30, 30 years, probably. Me and Butch wrote the song on the spot. No, 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 no. You and Butch did not write the song. 
Hmm. My bonehead father shows up. I he, like, you know, I, I was like, hey, I really need you to do me a favor. I need you to write a song that's really, really heartfelt. And I need you to make it about me and my mom and my family and the story. And he was like, okay, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll write the best song I've ever written. Remember he showed up and he had like a fucking a, 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 a napkin from McDonald's <laughs> with like four lines on it. And I was like, what is this shit? So you took it inside and you you shut the door and you ghost wrote the whole song and said, here, Butch, sing this. Remember that? Yeah, yeah I remember. That's really what happened. All right, that's, that is what happened. <laughs> that's what happened. Uh, yes, that's what happened. My dad, my, my but dad. But he nailed is, it, but he nailed the fucking he song. He did nail it. He just, he wants to be famous and he wants to be a musician, but he doesn't realize when opportunity spits on his shoes. You know what I mean? But yeah, whatever. It's, 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 yeah, but anyways, he, the song in it was recorded right there in your mom's house. It was raining. At my great grandma's house that we bought in 1936 for 12 grand. It was crazy. Fucking Ricky and his kids. Stevon was, I mean, stevon has been with us from fucking day one. It's crazy. It's, it's Stevon, like that dude's just like. The, it's crazy, right? He just showed up that first day and just like, all right, you're my friend. He yeah. just never left, you know? He's never left. He's, just, he's been there the whole fucking time. It's crazy. He was in the middle of a huge shoot for somebody who shall remain nameless yesterday. And I was like, I need to do something with you. And he just like left his shoot and hung out with us for an hour and a half. And that blew left. my mind. <laughs> And went back to his. He shoot. was in the middle. He had the fucking street blocked off, and he left yeah, his own. They shoot had to all come the Broadway first. permitted for him. What, a, just like, what a guy! I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking guy! He's anyway. So th you're gonna show the video. We'll show the video now. It's like a minute. Half the people in that video, they're not with us anymore either. Yeah. Geiki passed away. Shadow passed away. Yeah. Yep. Murph. Murph. And it, you know, and you can tell even that time. I mean, it's all of us on the roof. We had these bats. It was a whole even even different Norm, time. Even Norm's in the video. He's not with us anymore. Was Norm in the video? Yeah, I think so. He was there. He's on the roof. He's on the roof. Yeah. We'll show that video. It's the first part of his video. that I was something special they knew what was coming for me we didn't have anything we had everything we've always been proud to be where we're from when the lights go down and the music's done at the end of the game when all the pieces are played when everything's over I was born and raised. That's how we, that's how we linked up. And when I made that film, I was like, I was fucked because I, because I remember I told you, I was like, I'm not, I can't get involved in your clothing part. I'll do the films. And I made that video and I was like, fuck, it was so good. It was too good. It was like, it was one of those things where everything just aligned. Yeah. You had that feeling like, Perfect I know storm. this is going to be amazing. And it just was, you know. Perfect fucking storm. Yeah. And um, yeah, man, we made that film. Three, I mean, when you look at it, $3,000, that's not a, that's like a $60,000 film. Yeah. On the low end, I think. Gorilla. But either way, we did it. We ran it. Put it together. Shout out to Andrew Wheeler. Came out, gave us his time. Um, so we put that together, and uh, and then you know, you're like, "Hey, man, why don't you do this with me?" I'm like, "I can't do this with you. I'll help you make films." But then I would wake up and be like, "I got an idea," and I hit you. I got an idea, Sponto. I got you. Should do this. And I'm like, yeah, let me just do it. I just I just do it and send me. What do you think of this? You're like, "Oh, that's sick." And it was just I just kept waking up. It was just like in my fucking head, and I kept waking up, and that and it was just like. One day I was like, "Fuck! I guess I'm doing it," and then we then we just hit the gas and we're like, "All right." And we sat. We I remember it was 2012. We had like it was the it was the end of 2012. Yeah. And that last quarter, we're <clears> like, <throat> we're like, and then Murph came in with the shoebox of cash, and we had a plan and we and we laid out this whole plan. He get what did he give us? Fifty grand in a book. Forty. Forty. 40 grand. <laughs> yep. Forty racks. I had yeah. it. So we flipped that 40 racks for a long time. We we we, we made that. We stretched it out. <laughs> we stretched it out. Yeah, Murph came with the money, and uh, and we just started. We just, I mean, that's the most fun is the beginning of a company. The most fun, yeah. Because all you're doing is running, yeah. and you, there's no like you don't have to deal with fucking cost of goods and margins. You're just like make the fucking shit, get it in the store. Yeah, it's a win. Yeah. Get it here. Yeah, it's a win. Yeah, everything's a win. Like every time you get something done, it's a win. It's like not. 
it's the hardest, most fun, best part because everything starts getting more and more serious and then more and more fucking emails and more and more. This was just us running around we like, for months. We didn't have a business plan. We didn't have, a, no. we didn't have anything. No, we're just like we didn't have a calendar. We had nothing. We had nothing. No, we just started making shit, and you know, and I think it was. I think that at the time, what we did at that time hadn't wasn't being done. We're not, you know, like the version that we did at that time was not being done at that time. It was a different world. Nobody was using old English typeface. No. Nobody was repping Los Angeles. Well, Nobody was doing any of the things that a ton of people are doing now. I don't think so. Nah, nobody. So yeah, we got started. And we got into, we got into five of the best doors. No, in the no, world. no, it wasn't five. We met Elliot because Elliot sent me a DM, and then he was like, "What do you want to do with your brand?" He's like, "Do you want to go to Zoomies? You want to go?" I was like, no, "No, no, no." I was like, "I shop at Union. Yeah, I want to go to Union." Yeah. And I remember that the one guy from over there, he was like, "You'll never, ever, 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 ever get into Union. So get that out of your head." Oh, who said that? Uh, I'm not gonna say his name. I'm not gonna disrespect him. He passed away too, but he was just like, "You'll never get in there. It's it's not gonna happen. So just." Don't even think about it. Oh, and this yeah. before online was a thing. There was no online sales. There was no online sales. Nah, it was about. It, it was, was just about, starting up. It was about the doors. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it was about. It was about wholesale. And Elliot came and he was just like, "I'm gonna get you into Union." And then he showed it to Chris. And then Chris Gibbs was like, "Oh, I like this." Yeah. And then Chris Gibbs was like, "I'm gonna place you in like 40 doors around the globe." Oh yeah. Slam Jam, Colette, Colette. Hearst yeah. Life, like all you know, all the good doors oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And that's yeah. when it got like serious. Yeah. And that's when it got serious. And that's when we just started like. We just started going, and as soon as that happened, you got sick. Right? Well, like, yeah, I mean, let's yeah, let's not jump right into that. There was like after we finished, we finished the film. We did the pop up at Union. Remember, we were like, where it's like five o'clock and nobody was there, and you and me were like pacing around smoking cigarettes. We're like, I guess no one's gonna show up. And then at seven o'clock, like three, four hundred people showed up. At the Is same that time. for the town I live in or the first film? Remember, we showed the town I live in at Union also. Oh, that's right. But yeah. that was that was for our kickoff, wasn't it? That was for 2013. Oh, yeah, that might have been. That oh. was. Yeah, because yeah, we did the other one on our own. Yeah, yeah. The town I live in was for the kickoff. Yeah. And I remember someone in someone in the store cried when they saw it. And I was like, <laughs> someone was like some someone was brought to tears. I was like, that's fucking amazing. Because the town I live in was another one where yeah. we shot that thing on a shoestring at a stage. We got your, your homies got his band <laughs> for life. We got, we got banned from Siren Studios forever. We can yeah. never go back. Yeah. You're, like you, they you got all your... wasted because we took a long time to get production ready. And there's a bar across the street. So they all went across the street and got fucking hammered. And they came back and they broke into the next soundstage and started stealing shit. Yeah. <laughs> they were like shaking people down yeah. and shit. It was fucking wild. It was, it was yeah, wild. Yeah. But that was another thing. If you look at that video for the town I live in, it's a shoestring. Everyone came together. And it's another moment in time, man. Like all those people, we did those group shots. Like yeah. we did the portraits. You know, there's there's definitely been a strong aesthetic with Born and Raised from the jump. You can trace it from the beginning to the fucking, to the last thing we've done. Yeah. You know? And anyway, so we did Town of Living. We launched and things are going good. We're flying. I remember one time we went to, you know, shout out to Elliot too for for the early, like, Elliot plugged us early. Yeah, he did. Money ruins everything. He's got his own thing going on now. And the funny thing too about money ruins everything is that we were all having, we were all having uh, lunch at the fucking, uh, uh, the the vegan uh, Thai place down the street and and we're talking about what we're gonna do and I was like yeah man it's gonna be good till we make some money money ruins everything and, and Elliot's like Bing he's like can I have that I'm like yeah and I drew him like a logo and now he's turned into a he's got a skate shop in like uh, middle America good yeah. for him man good for you <clears throat> Elliot um, in Oklahoma or something yeah smart uh -huh. smart move I think um, so so yeah we uh, you know Elliot plugged us early we uh, we were off and running and. Um, it was crazy. I remember going to lunch after meeting with Chris at Union and just being like, like just having that feeling like, fuck, we got into the store we wanted to get into. Yeah. We're opening up these other doors. It was but like, it was just, it was like one thing after another. It just kept getting better and better and better and better. Like Union, Union pop-up, everything sold out. Colette, yeah. you know, it's just like, Chris is going to do you a solid. He's going to kind of manage your, like he just, oh, yeah. just oh, kept, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just yeah. kept getting better and better and better. And we and do better. those installations. Remember we go somewhere, just paint a place, do graffiti, hang, yeah. hang zines. And then I was like, I was at home one night and then like I was looking on Instagram and then I saw a picture of Kendrick it was like it was on hypebeast and it was like Kendrick performing in Japan in Tokyo wearing our clothes like head to toe and born and raised and I was yeah. just like I threw my phone like lights out y'all can just give up now like you guys just better surrender like we're about to fuck your whole shit up you know right when Kendrick was brand new when he was brand new and they did yeah. the video for um him in school college greens 
Collard Collard Greens. Greens. And it was Collard Greens after that. Like yeah. it was, and then it was like I saw that the other day. The whole the whole video is wearing our shit. Yeah, but, but no was, one knew who they were back was, then. It was, it was brand new. We no, were so they didn't new. know who they knew who they were. They didn't know who we were. They didn't know who we were. Yeah, it was too early for us. That was a branding lesson right there. I was like, Ooh. we need to have the brand, like, because there wasn't a lot of branding. Because yeah. I was kind of anti branding, but now I'm like, oh, I need to have the brand on there. You gotta see our name. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, those are like the bandana prints and the fucking Snooty Fox and all that shit. So anyways, um, all that shit's going on. It's exciting. And then what happens? It, we had our victory lap dinner, remember? We had mm -hmm. our victory lap and we like we had dinner on the roof. And we were oh, like, yeah. We're like, we're like, good fucking job. That was tight. We crushed yeah. it. Let's figure out what's next. Yeah. And then um, I went out of town for like a day. Not that far, but I went to like Palm Springs. Palm Springs. And then I started feeling funky when I was there. And then like I woke up in the morning and I went to go have breakfast down by the pool. And then <clears throat> I remember I said, ah, I feel funny. I'm gonna go lay back down for a second. And that was like at 8 a.m. And then I like lay down, I woke up and it was like 9.30 p.m. And I was like, I feel fucking weird, man. I was like sweating profusely. I couldn't form sentences. So I left and I went to the hospital and checked myself in. I hadn't paid my insurance. So I remember I got some weed from somebody. I got some weed from Spody. And then I sold, I sold like a quarter of weed to somebody and I went and reinstated my insurance and then I went to Kaiser. And I was right. like, okay, my insurance is good. Cool, I don't feel well. And then I went in there and they're like, I had to go back three times, but the fourth time they were like, oh wait, you are sick. And I was like, I told you, like I, I told you something was wrong. So they put me in a wheelchair. I was like, why you put me in a wheelchair? Like, I, I'm fine, I can walk. They're like, no, get in the wheelchair. Something's really wrong. They brought me upstairs to my bed and then like this little lady scurried in the room and she dropped a pamphlet on my chest and she was like, you have cancer. That's, that's all she said. And then she scurried out of the room. <laughs> and I was like, no social skills, just like all classroom. You know what I mean? I just like, I picked it up and it was like. A, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember you said, you're like, they sent me this pamphlet. You sent me a picture. I'm like, that's not It right. was like you out of the that. Simpsons. Like, yeah. so, like, so you're going to die. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I was like, yeah. man, I don't got fucking cancer. So I yeah. called you and I'm like, hey man, I said I have cancer. And you were like, no way. And then you're like, I'll be right there. It was 2 a.m. And then you showed up. You put Omar in your backpack, yeah. which I think about it now. Like you have like this feral creature in your bag and you snuck it into where I, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. And you slept there. Like, someone later was like, you can't bring a dog into yeah. a cancer ward. I was like, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> yeah, man. I brought Omar in there. And then, and then, and then, I, you know, there was like another thing where it was like, okay, now we're doing this. Yeah, he came in. He was like, "You have." He like, there was a remember. There's a ton of people there. There was like a hundred people there that day. Mm -hmm. So I, I think about it now. I'm like, who are all those people? Like, cause yeah, I, right now I talked to like five people. Yeah. Like yeah. the lady came. She's like, "Are you a rapper or something?" And I was yeah, like, yeah, "No, yeah. why?" She goes, "Because since there's from Friday everywhere. to Sunday, there's been 184 people come here to see you." And I was yeah, like, yeah. "I think now I'm like, who are all those fucking people?" You know. But um, I know he made everybody leave one day. He's like, "Everybody get out the room." He's like, "I gotta talk to you," and he shut the door and he was like, "Hey man, you have." some really serious cancer he goes you don't have like you know you don't have something light he goes you have type t lymphoblastic leukemia lymphoma and i say well is it going to kill me or not just be honest with me he goes you have about a 95 percent mortality rate and it got quiet and i was like yeah whatever but it's, I, i'm gonna beat it it's fine like you're not this shit can't face me you know what i mean i was like yeah, get the fuck out of here so he's like well i'm gonna do you want to start chemo because if you don't start today or tomorrow morning you're you might die. So I was like, yeah, just keep it here, man. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. It's nothing. So they came the next day and he had this like big ass cylinder. It was huge. And it was full of this red liquid, like Kool-Aid. And they, they, they ran a pick line in here and they're like, are you ready? You cool? And I was like, just give it, man. I don't, you know, give me the chemo. I don't care. Cause I had no knowledge or understanding of what chemotherapy was like. You only right. just like, you think of cancer, you think of like, you know, your aunt Selma, who's like a hundred years old and lost her hair. You don't think of it as like when you're young. Right. So, he gave me so much chemo for a month straight. I went in there like 205 pounds. I came out of there at 138 pounds. Remember that? Yeah. I had to like walk with a cane. They put me like, I lost all my hair. And I was like, oh man. Yeah, this the is pick line was in you for like what, <laughs> half a year or something? Nah, I had in there for four years. Four years, just yeah. sticking in there. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It would get infected all the time. Anyways, yeah, I did chemo for four yeah, and a half years, fucked. which is the most awful thing I've ever had to endure in my whole life. I don't wish that upon my worst enemy. <laughs> And that was 2013, it's 2021, and I'm still fucked up now. Right. I wake, I haven't felt like myself since 2013, the beginning of, of the year, you know? Crazy. Yeah, I did a photo shoot this morning, and like every day I wake up somebody different. Yeah. I never know what I'm gonna be like. Am I gonna, am I gonna be slow? Am I gonna be tired? Am I gonna forget things? Is my speech gonna be affected? You see me. I don't like show it on Instagram or like tell everybody like, hey everybody, I'm fucked up. I'm fucked up yeah. still. Like I'm yeah. destroyed. That shit ruined me. Like right. it, it fried my central nervous system. I have no immune system. Like you ever get punched in the face? 
Mm-hmm. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I feel, you know that feeling when you're like confused when you just get punched in the face? Sometimes I feel like that all day. Yeah. So I'm just like, I'm trying to get back to any sort of like being normal, if that's even possible at this point. Because right. we work, you, me, and everybody else, Bradley, I love you too, Bradley, you're the fucking, you're the king. Like he changed everything for us. Um, but we work so fucking hard, you know, like 18 hour days, seven days a week while I'm holding my kids. And then like, I'll, I'll try to get this meeting and work so hard to get there. And then I get there and the fucking health just comes, just fucking levels me, just flattens me. Yeah. You know, it's the, most, it's the most frustrating feeling in the world, you yeah. know? Cause I feel like I'm, it's just like a hamster running. It's like Groundhog Day, you yeah. know? Yeah. I just, it's just, I'm like, it is sucks. there a fix? It's like, I'm tired of all the Western doctors. Cause I go in, they're like, cool, you want drugs? You want surgery? I can't help you, get out. You know what I mean? So I just, and I'm going in a circle from doctor, 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 doctor. Um, so I'm about to just, I'm about to just chuck it and just go full Eastern medicine at this point. Right, you get some fucking. <laughs> but the only reason I beat cancer is yeah, chemo helped. But the whole time, what was I doing? What were we doing? What Come on, man, doing? think real hard. What, drinking juice? Drink- <laughs> Party? What I was are- eating medicine. We were going to ceremony. Oh yeah. I was, was going a, to, I was going to peyote ceremony with my dad all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that? I yeah, took I you with me. That. Oh, yeah, I remember that. You want to talk was, about that? Yeah, are we there? Are we, are we, yeah, <laughs> let's get, yeah, 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 we can talk about that. Um, <laughs> the giant horse. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, <laughs> fuck. So, yeah, there was a, there was a period of like, I mean, I, I'm, and, and just to speak about the chemo and all that shit is I was thinking about it today when you said you were coming over, I was like, it got, yeah, right, right before I did the peyote is right when I, right after that I had a relapse because I couldn't handle the pressure anymore. It was me and you and we had Carlos working with us and that was it. And then he got snaked and then yeah, it was just you snatched. and me and I was like, you know. Yeah, and it was like. I was dead. <laughs> it was so fucking crazy. It was like, it was fucked up. we're sharing a fucking office with a man face. Yeah. We're in his house. We're half in his, we're in, we worked out of his living room for years. <laughs> you, me and Carlos, you're in and out, gone for weeks. And it was just like, it was just, I just didn't even. I was like, what the fuck? I just, it was like every day I was just hanging on. And it was, it was frustrating because in the beginning of Born and Raised, like the beginning of our life, yeah. it was so charmed. Yeah, yeah we, it was we were just like, charmed, we were like, yeah. we, we had like this slot. It was yeah, like yeah, the yeah. best store, but it yeah. was just, it was perfect. Yeah. And then I got sick and then yeah. it kind of like slowed down a bit. So we're just, we were constantly trying to get back to that other place right. of like. We kept it going. Like we still, listen. No, we, we maintained did, our slot. We did. I worked all the way through fucking chemo for yeah. fucking eight years. No, you, you, listen, you're very uh, persistent. I'll just say that. <laughs> This, this man is very persistent and he never you never stopped and you never felt sorry for yourself and that was impressive because you just kept you kept pushing and but it in the, the in the middle of the chemo i remember times when you got so dark the shit that you would say to me i was like <laughs> yeah you're like i'm gonna fuck him don't don't say it <laughs> well you were saying some shit to me with complete certainty i'm like that's not a good idea you're like it'll be great for the brand <laughs> i'm like no, it won't. I'm I kept, like, that, I I'm like Smato, no, no, no. I, you, you're in a very dark, like you already run dark and then the chemo brain had you dark and I'm like, this fool is just like, I kept there were times I, when you left the reservation. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go pick a fight with somebody way bigger than me. I kept saying that, remember? A version of that. You're like, you need to stop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need to chill. Yeah, you were like, this is the answer. I'm gonna go out in a place of glory. I'm like, no, 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 no. Just hang in there. It was, it was very, it was basically the single most hardest thing I ever did was hanging in at Born and Race. Guarantee the hardest thing I've ever done. And, and I was had, I was a monster. You were it was crazy. I was well, I was like they're pumping gasoline into my yeah, body. Yeah, and yeah. like I was like my doctor told me, he goes, I'm gonna basically almost kill you. I'm gonna give you so much chemo yeah. you're gonna be like half dead and in hopes that maybe it can cure your cancer. You but know? then you would pop up, you'd wake up and just run wild for like a week and be like, ah and you'd be out running. We'd be going to parties. I mean, we go to full, we, we did the school bike you party. Partied, you were dead. I, you were a fucking you were like there's wait, there's pictures. Yes. Like, just make we'll sure find, they make sure they get shown. His face is like I'll find him. His face is bloated. He's got a fucking bandana. He's just got a cane. And we're in the middle. Like, we threw a party green. for Schoolboy Q. Yeah. It was an amazing party. Let's show that video. That video is insane. That video was tight. How good was that video? Yeah, that video Fuck, was that was good. I remember, f- like, yeah, that was great. Uh, the fucking Odd Future. <clears throat> everyone, it was, that was sick. That was a sick ass party. Yeah. Let's run that shit. Put that in the mix, Jason. You son of a bitch. I remember laying on the couch that night. Yeah. Because, like, I remember, like, the, the label reached out to us. Remember, you had to push me in a wheelchair into the label office? Like, I was all like, Ugh. 
yeah, I can throw you a best, the best party with the best people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we threw the party and as I came to like night of and I was laying on the couch all shot out and I was like, man, ain't nobody gonna show up. Oh yeah, you know, and I was, it was like, I was like, why did I do this shit? And we got there and I was like, this place is massive. We're not gonna fill this place. School boy, but I always feel like that every time I do something. Yeah, no yeah. one's gonna show up and then 5,000 people show up, you know? Yeah, but wild. It's that, a yeah, wild that thing party. Was, yeah, people were like doing flips off the speaker stacks. Lee was doing that. Like it was, oh, yeah. It was, yeah, it was wild. Play the video now, Jason. This is where the, the, the Schoolboy Q album release party run that. This hot as a motherfucker in here. Y'all all stupid for saying that this stupid ass shit. Hey, I don't do boring ass shows and shit. So if y'all in here about to just be looking stupid, I'm gonna throw the mic at every last one of you motherfuckers and make you hand it back to me so I can throw it at the next stupid motherfucker. Now let's get to that single, that uh, single type of shit. Cause I gotta get this out the way first. I gotta get this out the way. Hey, 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 yeah, 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 cross your girls everywhere. So then we part I you cuz you you were sober from age 28 to 40. You stepped off the wagon when you were like 40, right? Is if I remember correctly? Yeah, I mean it's it was uh it was after, yeah, actually you're right. It was the, 28 it was, to 40. It was, it was 28 to 40. It was yeah, after you're the right. shoot with the you're kids right. because we finished you're the right. shoot and we stopped in front of my house and the kids were like, "Hey, you want to play baseball?" And then they were smoking a they were smoking a blunt, remember? And then um they were passing it around and then they were smoking it and then you had taken it and hit it and passed it real quick. And whoever was standing next to me goes, hey, Two-Tone just smoked some weed. And I was like, no, I didn't, that fool's sober. <laughs> and that was like the beginning. Oh yeah. That was the beginning. And then we went hard for like, remember New York? Oh my God. Dark. Oh, Van that, Morrison at seven o'clock in the morning. Oh, horrible. We got, we all put our money together. <laughs> we, all, we all, it was like 30 people pulled, yeah. pulled our money together. We got burned on some shitty fucking Coke. It was like fucking, it was like no-dos and baby powder and starch. And we, we all got in a room and they did were it. having sex on the, in the stairwell. And they came like, you guys can't be fucking in this stairwell. And they threw us all out. Remember? Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. That, and then, yeah. And that was, I remember there was a period too where I was like, then born and raised for a minute turned into this thing where it was like i guess two tones partying now so the fucking i would just roll up in the office in the morning because i'd be up all night well let me let me tell you let me like a man of your size yeah i've seen a lot of people get get loaded in their lifetime right but a man of your size because you were like 
two two tones back then too, right? Mm -hmm. Huge. You would show up in the morning. You had been up all night. You would eat acid, take mescaline, drink a whole bottle of scotch, smoke a bunch <laughs> of weed, and still just remain unfazed and do your work. And like, do you like this design? I'm like, this motherfucker is crazy, dude. Yeah, I'm like a fucking tank. I just, it just, I just, yeah, it's it's bad. It's not, it's not good. Yeah, and I, I remember like, I remember like having Carl be a big. Like, Whatever, Carlos. I would, I would, Carlos. Who's your guy? You got a guy. You got a guy. And I'm like, you know, before long, I figured out my own shit. And, um, anyways, it was bad. I was just, I had a really bad routine, and uh, it, it got really dark again. Like it was like, you know, people. It was fun though. There's there a lot people of moments would, where it was a lot of fun. People would Rob, see me. Rob would, would come by. They would see me and they'd be like, "Man, how, are you okay?" I'd be like, "Nah, man. I'm about, I'm like on my last leg. I'm about to die." And they're like, "Well, your shoe look. You shoe. You sure look like you're having a lot of fun." Right. Because we did. I was just like, having a lot of fun. I would sit at home sometimes all by myself. And like when you're on chemo, I wouldn't sleep for like 10, 11 days sometimes. You don't eat, you don't sleep. You're just like wired because you're on all these drugs. So I'd stay up late at night watching cancer infomercials. You know what I mean? And I was just like, yo, this is, I can't do this shit. So I would just be like, I'm just going to go out with my friends. I'm going to drink because yeah. I feel like if I'm laughing, it's better than being sad. And yeah. drinking's going to make me laugh. So every time I laugh, my cancer dies a little bit, you know? So. I just kept it pushing the whole time, and we did. We had a blast the whole time. Was on there was yeah. it was a lot of. I had a lot of fucking fun, uh, and before it went dark for me, and and I remember skinhead Rob for a good like. I feel like it was a good eight months. Would come by every day, and just and just smoke blunts with us, and he would sit down, and we we me and Carlos used to call it. Uh, we used to be like, I would be, he would, he would smoke back to back. He just smoked like three or four blunts. When you say a word, just come light up. Yeah, what's up? Just smoke. And, I, and I'd smoke with him, face all these blunts. And I'd sit there at work and I'd be like, I'd look over at Carlos. <laughs> and Carlos look at me and he'd be like, he'd be like, he'd be like, is it happening? I'm like, yeah. He goes, your skin came off? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I, there's no skin on me. I'm skinless. Like we were so high, we felt like we were just like anatomy. <laughs> we were, it was so hot. I was so high on fucking marijuana. Like, Again, marijuana is the strongest drug in the world. I'm just going to say that. Again. You used to remember. write love letters to weed. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, hey, drugs, love you. Yeah, yeah it was it was fucked. So anyways, uh, it was it was it was crazy, man. I went through a lot of went through a lot of shit. A lot of like this was not as a as a company goes. Uh, it was like a. I don't know. It was like being involved in a car crash and a fucking carnival and a marriage and a divorce and a fist fight and a fucking it was drowning. The best of times. And, it was the worst of times. Yeah, it was a roller horrible, coaster. But we had, I don't know. I, I don't know yeah. if we were having fun or if it was awful. Maybe both. I but don't we know. made some, we made and continue to make, we made some live shit. We made some ill shit. We just kept, when we came together and did our shit, it was fucking, it's, it's been consistently what it is. And that's some, we do something very good together. So, you know, and anyway, so then, then, before this, before before I, I had my uh, my slip, we went to Memphis because your old man was like, "Hey, you got cancer? I got the medicine." He called me crying. He was like, "I feel so helpless. I'm your dad. You're my yeah. oldest child, and like, I, you're sick. What can I do for you? I can't do anything. I'm your dad. I want to do something." So, the reason I did the gentrification is genocide thing because when I was 11 or 12, I didn't really know my dad. He would like come by once every couple of years on a motorcycle with a new girl in the back smoking a cigarette, you know. So my mom was like, you need to go see your dad this summer. And like Venice in 1992 and 93 was like off the hook. I wasn't trying to go nowhere. You know, I was trying to drink 40s and turn it up. But I was like, go with your dad. He's going to take you to Sundance. And I was just like, well, what's Sundance? He's like, go with him and figure it out. So we flew to Memphis. I didn't really know, dude, you know, and like my stepmom, Caroline, my little sister. And then we drove, we drove to Sundance, which is like one of the oldest, most sacred ceremonies there you know, that we do, that we practice. So he took us there and he kind of taught you, like took me to sweat lodge. They would take me when I was little, but this was, I was 12, you know, so started going to sweat, started going to peyote meetings, started doing Sundance and then came back home to Venice and like lived my Venice life. But during that time, I became so fond of going to, doing all those, practicing all those ceremonies with, uh, with my family. I was like, Butch, I don't call him dad, but like, Butch, you can do one thing for me. Just set up a meeting for me. I want to go have a meeting. And he's like, done, consider it done. And so then, was that the, when you when you did that that summer, was that the first time you got in touch with that shit? Or did you do it when you were younger too? I mean, it was around when I was younger, but I like when I was 12 was when I took to it. And I was like, when you okay, really this took is, to it. you know, I don't, but there's not even really a name for it, but this is my religion. This is how I practice, this is yeah. how I pray, yeah. you know, so. And it's heavy, like you've told me what goes on to those things, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, I, you know, you I, have can't, the, I can't go into it too deep, but yeah, yeah, yeah. like, I remember we were at, we were at Big Mountain, which is in Arizona, yeah. and then we were driving around the rest, and it said everywhere, relocation is genocide and like uh, really crude, fucked up writing. 
So uh-huh. I remembered that. And then when I came back home to Venice, I'm like, uh-huh. they're doing the exact same thing here. They're just removing us, you know? Federal raids, gang injunctions, gentrification, steal the house, get the fuck out of here, relocate. And I was just like, that's just America. Yeah. America just does that to people, yeah. especially poor people. Yeah. You know, people with no money, just move them around, shuffle them around. So that's how I, I kind of adopted that into the brand, which right. is, you know, adopting that kind of stuff, that's what makes it powerful, right? right? Um, but we had that meeting. We. <laughs> We flew to Memphis. Oh yeah. We drove to the Choctaw Res, and then we um had to eat some fucking crystals, which is disgusting. I'm sorry. You ate what? Crystals? Is that what it is? That was a little fucking. Don't, don't you ever? <laughs> that shit's horrible. Don't, don't you no, ever sorry, in your dog. life? Re- no, What's no. It? Crystals? Nah, stop. No, listen, no, no. It's medicine. <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm not talking about, talking about the food. But I'm not even talking about the okay, buttons. No, okay, no, no. I'm talking I mean, about the I fast food. Religion, like, no, 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 no. I'm talking <laughs> about the little fast food fucking burgers. Chris, crystal burgers. See, crystal my, burgers. My dad's Those like little a, fucking four packs. I was like, what the fuck? Butch, if you see this, my bad dog, but you're like a cockroach, homie. This, <laughs> this, food, this food lives off a of crystal burger and what, like the most awful food. He eats salt pork every fucking morning. I, know, we like, go, I remember we went to the supermarket and the produce section was this big. And there was aisles full of Taco Bell and Dorito brand food. I never seen it before. All this bright colored neon yeah. food everywhere. It's, it's, just, no, it's like a food, it's food, what they call a food desert, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> we, yeah, I go to your house. It's the middle of fucking winter. You're sick as a dog. I got pictures from that too. Remind me to, to pull that for pull, you. Pull those up and show those. Remember we, in front of that mural where it's like, when are you going to die? It says, when are you go? I was like, it's, this is like a scene out of a fucking movie. Like we were doing graffiti it. in Memphis too. We went around fucking tagging on yeah. shit with your dad. See, we did have fun when I was half dead. Oh. When I was, we were, no, we were no, like no. riding graffiti. Were, we were out of control. We were fighting. We, doing yeah. all, we got in a lot of like fist fights when I was like <laughs> 90 pounds. <but laughs> yeah, man. Like, <laughs> you want to- <laughs> Yeah, I mean, your yeah. old man was with us. We're writing on fucking people's houses and well, shit. Well, you wanted. Remember, he had beef with the people at that one bar. Oh yeah, he told us to go bar. bar. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know what the fuck was what, what was going through my head. Butch, man. Was, Butch is crazy, man. He when called, I, he when I, I had a midlife, when I met you, I was like so fucking focused, and I was like in this thing, and you're like, "Come on, man, this go have some fun." I'm like. Okay, and then I'm next to you know, like a couple of days later, I'm running around like a fucking 15 year old tagging on shit in broad daylight. They, like I completely lost we were, my mind. We were doing day bumps, day painting. Dude, <laughs> out of control. Um, Just, it was wild. So, so yeah, we're in Memphis, whatever. Memphis is Memphis. The fucking ceremony. We go to the, we go to the, we go to the, uh, the piece of land. Who's, whose house was that? Uh, this nice gentleman named Mac. I've Mac. been to, I don't know, six or seven peyote meetings at, a, at, his, at his house. That's so like we, Uncle, Uncle Mac. Uncle Mac. Yeah. And we pull up there and it's a big spread of land. And the first thing is during the day, we build we build the teepee. We built the teepee. Put the, we put the poles up. Yep, put the yeah, poles put, up. Yeah. Bush is like, you need, I need you to help me. And I got pictures of that too. We built these fucking, what, 20 foot poles? I don't know how big they are. The no, no, bigger is, than that. More than that. The teepee is so fucking big. Yeah. Like you have an idea what a teepee is as a kid. You're like, oh, a little teepee. No, the teepee is fucking gigantic. Yeah. It is a huge structure. And we spent all day building that thing. And then I have no idea what the fuck I'm in for. I'm just like, oh yeah, yeah, let's well, do I this. I told you I was like, yo, come, come to this <laughs> ceremony with me and my family. Yeah, it's the most beautiful thing you'll you'll ever see in your life. Because yeah. for me, it is like yeah. it doesn't get any more gorgeous than that, you know. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted you to experience it with me because yeah. we were kind of going through the same thing at the same time. You're my partner. I was like, yeah, just come on, let's go, let's 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 figure this out. Yeah, you know. But um, I'm glad I did it. I'm never. I'll never have another experience like that in my life because i've done i spent my whole life doing psychedelics and being like oh well fucking i like doing psychedelics i'm like no i was i was not doing it the way it was because my family doesn't refer to it as that like we no. don't even say it's a psychedelic or yeah. no this is medicine it's medicine it's medicine yeah. we eat medicine when we want clarity in life you know you want healing you eat medicine and, and he has a he, he gets it through the government right yes my dad uh he has a card he has a card um leonard crow dog uh some people out there watching might know who Leonard Crow Dog is. He actually passed away last year on my birthday. Hmm. Um, you could pull up a picture of Leonard Crow Dog. Um, I went to the very first Sundance with him. I danced next time at um, Crow Dog's Paradise, which is in South Dakota, right next to Pine Ridge. But he used to be a road man, so he somehow got my father a, like a, a license to buy peyote from the government. Can you tell him what a road man is? A uh, road man is the one who conducts the meeting. And I, I don't want to go too far into it anymore because I feel like I don't want to disrespect. Yeah, you tell me where the ceremony. To, you know, yeah. what I mean? it's just like let's leave it there. You okay. know, like I, that's how I practice. That's how I pray. That's 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 the reason why I'm still alive today. I'm I'm convinced. I'll tell you in that in that I'll just say this: twelve hours 
right? Well, it's like it's whenever you guys sit down from like eight o'clock at night or whatever yeah. till the sun comes up. Sitting in one spot. You're yeah. not allowed to fucking move. You're allowed, you have to sit in one spot till the, and it's in the winter yeah. in a teepee. And I remember, I'm just going to tell, stop me if I go too far, but a couple of things I remember. I'm just going to touch a few things. One is, I remember, I remember at one point I was like being goofy and I was like, well, hey, Sponto, look at this. And you're like, we're not here for that. I'm like, what do you, because I'm talking shit. And I was like, hey, look at this fool. And you're like, no, 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 we're not here for that. And I go, I go okay. And then I start, and then I start like going into like the fire and looking at it. And the, this is the one thing I came out with. This is the big question. Are you an asshole? To myself. That was the question. <laughs> Are you an asshole? That's real deep, Alex. It is. <laughs> it fucking is because, because that is, that's the eternal question. Are you a fucking asshole? And I'm telling you, it took me a long time. It took me five years after that to realize, yes, I am an asshole. And I'm trying to fix it because I'm a fucking asshole. Well, that's what you do. You go back and you look at yourself. And you're like, yeah. what do I need to fix about myself? Yeah. But I remember you were being so goofy in the beginning. Yeah. And when I first started to eat medicine, it kind of affects me where I start to laugh a lot. You know yeah. when you're like, in, you're in second grade, you get the giggles and you're trying not to laugh so a teacher don't hear you? Yeah. The, remember the whole first half of the meeting was like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were yeah, like, yeah. we we're crying. We we're trying to laugh yeah, so hard. <laughs> Some dude yeah. was wearing a fucking crazy out. I was like, what the fuck? Don't it, rag no. on nobody's outfit. Okay. Yeah. No, no, I'm talking about the, the white guy. I'm not oh, the guy who had no shoes on. Yes. And it was like negative 20. It yeah. was below 20. Yeah, I was like, look at his feet. <laughs> It's there right. was a man, the man that did the, um, that had the shovel. Was that what's it? What do they call that guy? I don't know what. I don't know. There's a man that's job is to move the coals. That man. Well, that's 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 the fireman. The this fireman. this dude, that dude wasn't the fireman. Okay, he well, was just sitting over there in the. No, spot. no, not no. I know, yeah. but the man who did move the coals. Yeah, that man was a different species of human being. If day or night. When I saw him, I was like, this dude is built differently. It, there is, that man was so big. Johnny. He was, yeah. I looked at this guy and he, he moved differently. I swear to fucking God, there's nothing to do with anything. He was a different person. He moved differently than other people. He was so big and so powerful looking. I was like, this dude, this is like a different, a different homo sapien. Am I wrong? He was. I think that was just the medicine working on you. I don't know, man. <laughs> He maybe yeah, I would meet him and I'm like, oh hey, you're just a normal guy. I remember him being like literally he looked ten feet tall and he's doing this sh he's oh, That was definitely the, the medicine. But he, medicine. he was a very he's a very large guy. He's a very big guy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it was that being said, at the end we won't talk about the whole thing inside the TP, but we'll talk about afterwards. Oh, do you remember no, I ate shit? No, <laughs> Was that before we well, even got when, in? When you go to a meeting, you want to look. I, I, me personally, like my, you know, my butch, my dad, my stepmom, my little sister. We all get dressed up real nice because you're yeah. going to somewhere special, you know. Yeah. So we all went and got dressed all sharp. I did my hair, put put my outfit on, and you did the same. But you you walked out of the <laughs> you walked out of the door. You jumped off the porch and you slipped in the mud, and your feet were like this, and you landed. And you were just covered in mud. You went inside to go change, and then um, we walked down to where the meeting was at, and then that fucking we heard the the hooves. That was after. Right after you got changed. No, I thought it was after the whole thing. No, no that wasn't. That was before. That was before? Yeah, before we went in. Oh. Yeah. And that, like, it was the loudest horse noise oh, I've yeah. ever heard. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you and, it's just it, this massive horse. It was like it was like as tall as your ceiling. It was it was big it was the white horse. Thing I've ever seen. And the fucking the hooves were like this big, and it ran right past you. A wild horse. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. we're like, we, you and I were like, what? And we're all scared, and then everybody yeah. was like, what was that? We're like some <laughs> some giant horse, you yeah. know? Like, yeah, so weird. Very crazy, very bizarre, and what an intense experience. Insane. Anyways, so we come back, and we're still pushing, and uh, who's that, Omar? Or she it's Omar. Um, Why is she wearing a handboy pillow? Because you can't scratch, you can't open up that, that scar. Um, yeah, we came back, and you still, you know, I think I think after that you did get better, like you you've graduated from chemo, right? Yeah. You stopped the cancer. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know I think that's as I know we've told this story before, and I think this is as, as far as we've got because we haven't told it in years. You know we haven't told the origin story in a long time, but I feel like everything after that is you know is is pretty much like that's the beginning of born and raised. Up until that point, we had. One employee here, one employee there. It was just you and I. And then after that, after that time, everything's turned into an actual company. Yeah. But for that four or five years, it was just this like this energy entity thing that was happening between us, and we were making things happen. You know, you were going to the fucking. 
you would go to the silk screener. I would go there and fucking make shit. It was just like, we we're just making it like day by day, making shit happen. We're just doing cool shit that we like yeah. to do. Like just, that's what we did. And we made a career out of just doing cool shit that we like to do, which right. is amazing. You know? But then at some point where it's not even worth talking about is that it turns into a company and now we're in a company. Now we're in a thing where there's people that, you know, there's people, there's people probably texting us, email us right now. No, I'm, I have so much anxiety because my phone is just going bananas. Right. Like, <laughs> it's people that yeah. people that need answers from us all we, day. We have a major deadline for tomorrow. With, yeah. But and we're sitting here doing this shit. But whatever, it's all no, good. I get it's it. Just, it's, but it's, it's never. There's always a major deadline. Yeah. Our 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 life now. There's always a comment coming towards us. It's gonna hit us on Wednesday. Yeah. And now I'm just like, it's normal. Okay. Yeah. We'll figure. We always get it figured out. <clears throat> we get there every time and we figure it out. I just want a break. I know. I'm fucking tired. Like we worked from 2013. I worked all the way through cancer. I yep. never stopped. I just kept trudging, kept going, kept fighting. You know, so I'm just like, I just want like a three month break. Not a, like a fucking week. Not like a weekend. Not like two weeks. I need three months. A week months. just makes me more tired. Yeah. Three you know? months. I need you need a, you need three weeks to fucking decompress. Yeah. And you need you need time to just hang out somewhere. Yeah. Me personally, what I I want to just go sit in the fucking wilderness somewhere. I want to go sit in the fucking woods, turn everything off, and just paint with my own shit. I don't know. Eat fucking berries. Fuck a moose. Just get the fuck away from everything. No fucking Instagram, nothing. I, I think I could do it. I don't know. Put my phone, maybe put my phone in a, give it to People put always it in a say they're box. like, man, Sponto, if you, if, you had, like, if you had nothing to do and you were good, you were set, everything was fine, you'd lose your mind. And I'm like, bullshit. Let me sleep for a year. Let me wake up when I feel like waking up, hang out with my daughter. I'll get a dozen Rottweilers. Yeah. You know, I'll eat fucking cereal with coconut milk and watch cartoons with my kids. Like I don't, you know. But the thing is, after that, let's say, let's say, for example, there was a reality where born and raised moved into another phase, or we got a break, or whatever. Let's say that happened. Let's say we had a break. If I had a three month break and born and raised wasn't on the other end of that, by the time that three months was over, I would be like, I would have thirty thousand new ideas. It would be like I'd, I would have come out of that. Would well, be like, that's the thing, right? Like if we sit for a year, yeah, then we're gonna figure out what's next, right? Like. What, what are our ideas? What do we want to work on now? Because now it's just like, it's like playing checkers. It's like hopscotch, like bam, 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 bam. bam. Like do your job, you yeah. know? Yeah, it's just do, it's just answer, answer. It's just calendar. Okay, this has to be done, that has to be done. Yeah, it's yeah. going so fast. I was talking to, I was talking to Stefan about it too the other day and he was talking about when he was doing, yesterday when he came by and he was talking about how he did a documentary in, in um, the LA Originals. He was talking about P-Rod, what P-Rod was saying about watching them do their thing when Stefan and Cartoon were fucking just chewing everything up. Like yeah. when they were the first ones out here doing shit in the way they did it. Yeah. And he said that when you're doing it, you're just going so fast, you can't see. Like I can't see what's around me. I'm just like. We're in the bubble. We're in the bubble. Mm -hmm. You can't see the outside. We're just in it fucking. Blah, 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 blah. And you can't see it. And imagine like, man, sometimes like, sometimes I just have like a few hours after I have a few, like when I go out of town, I have a little bit of time off and then my brain clears and I'm like, then I just start having better ideas and uh, we need a break. I'm fucking babbling. We need a fucking break. Can we get a break? No, we're not getting a break. We're not gonna get a break. We're, we're not gonna, gonna I don't see, we're not getting I don't break. even see how like humanly possible. Like there's no, I don't see any breaks in the near future at all. No, it's not gonna stop. No. You just have to take, you have to make them and take them. You gotta be like, hey, I'm leaving for two weeks. That's it, yeah. deal with it. It's just, that's but, what I do now. Yeah, I'm but like, yeah, but you know, it's crazy. Like when you go and leave for like a week or whatever it is, like I left for four days. Yeah, I came back and then I got like I looked at my emails and it was like, Brr. and I, it makes me even more stressed out than before because I didn't get a break and then I come back and I see all these emails. You have to play catch up. And yeah. You're playing catch up for three weeks. That's the know? way it is. Yeah, yeah, like, you gotta get, you gotta book your breaks. Like I'm, a, I'm probably gonna remember last time we went to Hawaii with um with Pat from oh, Ruka yeah. and we yeah. went for uh, uh, Ruka Aloha. Yeah, and like remember you used to watch movies and you're a kid like the stressed out businessman on the beach with his briefcase. <laughs> like I'm that fucking dude now. You know yeah. what I mean? Like where can I plug in my modem? Like it's just yeah, it's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, what's, yeah. what's the Wi-Fi like? Like that's yeah. that's who I am now, and I'm like, oh, turn into this guy. I know, you know. But one day we'll get a break. One day. Yeah, sure. I don't know. <laughs> we get no break, though. I know, right? Nah. Uh -uh. You got, you're just gonna like you're gonna turn around one day. It's gonna be like time to retire. <sighs> Anyways, time's really yeah. Time's flying by. It's flying by. My daughter's about to be three. I feel like she that's was just, crazy. She was just born. My crazy. oldest is twenty. Crazy. Yeah. How's that guy? <laughs> What's he's he doing? Doing his thing. He's doing his thing. He's, he's you know, he goes to jujitsu. Oh, my okay. um, my um, my Carter's nine. Yeah. He's going through puberty. He's nine. Oh my god, that's crazy. He was on a date. He was on a date drinking mocktails with his girlfriend. <laughs> the nine year old on a date. Yeah. That's a crazy. Of all the things we talked about, that's the craziest. I got, thing I'm gonna give the yet. photo. I'm gonna we'll put the Carter, so, we'll put the photo of Carter. Right I don't. Here. Can we put up a photo? <laughs> can we put up a photo of nine year old? There's two nine year olds on a date. 
He bought her like a necklace. And then, you know, they came back with the bill and they had spent like $400. I'm like, what did you guys? What, what the fuck did they go? It's not what, Jackie Cheese. What did you guys order for $400? Like, what the Good. fuck? He went to Giorgio's and shit? Where the fuck did he go? <laughs> I brought. I want to show you this. You haven't seen this yet? No. Oh, you're going to love this. Go full screen. Go full screen. I can't go full screen on Instagram. but Okay. There you go. Perfect. You're going to love this. This is really nice. This is why we do what we do in this country. So people can do this. I think this might be Canadian. Where's North America? Are we in North America? Why we even trying? Don't deserve a raise. This is America. Oh, boy. <laughs> don't catch you climbing up. Cause don't get you slipping up. Hey, come. This is America. We'll say North America. The boys could be tripping out. Yeah, yeah. I'ma go into this. Yeah, yeah. Crew, I hope what's your pick? Look at the moonwalk. This is America. Look how I'm spitting. This is real. This is real. I'm being childish. You can be no. This shit's fire. But you knew, though. Get a man, get a man, get a man. Make a fan, make a fan, make a fan. I gotta give up my dreams. Gotta be the Taliban. Get down. This is like, this is real. This isn't Saturday Night Live. This is a real. Yeah, I know. She made this. Who is this woman? I don't know. It's on that. You never, you never, you never been on a catatonic youth. Nah. This is bad music and nah. horrible music videos. This is the most insane. Just when I think that people can't get more tone deaf and stupid, they do this. And by people, you know who I'm talking about. I know who you're talking about. This is crazy. This is the craziest shit. I, I mean. I, I think by the time this comes out, this will be everywhere. Everyone, I mean, I see other stuff like other renditions of the same message. Yeah, and I'm just like, are you fuck? It's like, like, um, it's like, did you ever see the thing with uh, the woman did the thing called "I Want to Be Ninja"? It's like an Orange County. Um, she had a party and she sings a song about a ninja. You ever seen this? This blonde woman in Orange County. It's like a. It's like look at Google. I want to be ninja. You ever seen this? this? Is amazing. Keep them stupid. Keep them fat. Yep. <laughs> This is like old news. Have you seen this? I see. Pink carpet launch party for Jennifer Murphy beds. It's probably, I think it's the same woman. It might be. And listen, I think Middle America thinks this is cool. They're like, I want to go to California. Live, laugh, love. <laughs> Either way, that's enough. Uh, so I want to send a shout out to these guys, Poor Devil Pepper Company. They took it upon themselves to send me some hot sauce, and this shit's almost gone. I've been I've been dousing my food in this hot sauce. This one's called the Evil Possessor. It's mild. We got the hotter one, Poor Devil Pepper Co. Uh, the Green Widow. Shit's bomb. Alex, will you grab the other merch they sent me too? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give these guys a shout just for sending me. Now, I'm going to go on record. Don't be sending me shit ever. Don't send me anything. But if it's delicious hot sauce, you can send it because I'll eat it and it doesn't have to live in my house. I'll tell you this. With I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you guys a little... Uh, with, with, with the hot sauce, I was sent some merch. Now, Sponto knows how this goes. People be sending us shit all the time. I'm going to tell you something right now. The last thing I need in my life is another t-shirt. I haven't opened this t-shirt. I'm never going to wear this t-shirt. Okay. But I'll tell you, I'm going to eat the fuck out of this hot sauce. It's no knock on your t-shirt. It looks like a great t-shirt design. It looks like a something that, it looks like something that uh, Jason would wear. Hand me that, Alex. What is this? Also, I didn't, I haven't tried this yet because the calories look crazy. Viking maple hot chili maple syrup. In collaboration with the Poor Devil Pepper Company. I'm waiting till I have a, 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 a sweet, uh, spicy blowout, but I'm not ready for this because I don't have the I don't have the calories in my Noom account to fuck with that shit yet. But this shit right here, all over my eggs all the time. This shit right here, all over everything else. This T-shirt though, which one do you got? You want a T-shirt? Because I can't. I can't. Let me just tell you guys something. Oh, also they sent me these spices. Look at this. What are these? This umami, these crazy umami spices from the Poor Devil Pepper Company. Thanks, boys. Appreciate it. The shit's good. It's delicious. So I'm giving you a shout. I'm going to use these spices on something. Uh, I'll probably sprinkle it in Omar's food. She'll probably love it. And then the t-shirt. I'm going to talk about this t-shirt. So here's the thing. If you guys are sending me anything, don't ever send me a t-shirt. Unless it's a vintage t-shirt that I really want. Unless I request it. 
Okay. I don't want any fucking t-shirts. I got so many goddamn t-shirts in my closet. It's just stacks and stacks. I can't even, I have hundreds of t-shirts folded in my closet and I wear about five t-shirts. That's, that's, I got too many t-shirts, too much stuff. And they sent me this thing. What do we got here? We got, um, Satan, poor devil, poor devil pepper company. Oh, this is a nice design. Look at this. You got the devil. This looks like it's up Jason's alley. Is this your size, Jason? You see is something you would wear? It's an you, XL. You satanic piece of shit. Yeah. It's a double X. It's it's built for me. I think you should put this on right now. Put this put this take off your Iron Maiden t shirt. Is that a is that a real Iron Maiden t shirt or is it an No, it's a Walmart. Oh god damn it. You can't even get a vintage Iron Maiden t shirt. That's the thing I've ever bought Walmart for fifteen bucks. Let's see. Look at him. He's amazing. It looks great on you. That should be your new shit. You look great. Come come show the, the people at home. Let's let's give them another another peek behind the disgusting curtain. Yeah, sorry, guys. PTA. Sorry, everybody. Satanic panic over here. Look at that. Thank you for the t-shirt, boys. It goes right to Jason. I don't want it. I don't need it. I got I got my own fucking t-shirts. But thank you for the hot sauce. 